I'm here with Azamp. How are you doing, Azamp? Um, I'm, uh, I'm alive. Thank you. Hello. Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> how uh, how did you uh, enter this new year? Did you have a a good turn of the? I think 2016. Um, uh, I'm alive. Well, Thank you. like you know, kind of watched some fireworks, then I went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> did you? You didn't celebrate. Uh, no, 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 I mean, in, uh, Malaysia. You are in Malaysia. There's, there's right not, now, yeah. nothing. Yeah, I am in Malaysia right now. There's, there's no, there's no snow. We live near the equator, so. Um, so, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you, you live in Malaysia, but you study in England. What do you study? Yes, uh, currently I'm doing a master's in actuarial management. You probably haven't heard of it, but you know, uh, maybe I, you've heard of an actuary. Yeah, I know what an actuary is, but. Yeah, so it's kind of related to that. All right, and um, how how old are you? I am currently twenty one years old. Really, so young. My birth. Yeah. yeah, very young. And you already finished, uh, or you are finishing your masters? Ah, uh, yeah, I finished my first masters already. I'm doing a second masters now. All right, that's impressive. Um, I'm not so, doing so well in the second master. So. <laughs> uh, maybe <laughs> too much because AOE. you, yeah, you're playing too much Age of yeah. Empires. Um, so, so tell us a little bit. Uh, what what do you do when you don't study and when you don't play Age of Empires? I actually uh, play quite a lot of Team Fortress Two. <laughs> and and when you're not well, playing I mean, video games. Yeah, I mean, I I try to I try my best to actually work on the UI. I mean, this this UI thing, I've been working on it for at least two years now in its different forms. And it does actually take up quite a lot of my time. But I mean... We'll, we'll get to the UI. Yeah, yeah we'll get to that. <laughs> um, but but what I'm trying to get to is do you like, um, yeah, I mean, I, like I to read, read books or sports or something? I don't like really that. read books. I read uh, Japanese manga and Mm -hmm. watch anime that sort of stuff casually and your favorite food uh <laughs> durian can i say that <laughs> is it really durian or are you it is actually it is no i'm quite serious it is durian. i thought you were gonna say you've, you've, tr uh, you've tried it haven't you <laughs> no i mean naan is okay but it doesn't compare to durian ah, come on I, yeah i did try durian in in did uh, various <laughs> forms yeah did you like it uh, I think it's special. Uh, it's it's like it has a very strong flavor, right? So it's something that you sh I I wouldn't want to eat it every day. Like I would eat maybe um, uh, a, pi a pineapple or mango. <laughs> or I could eat that every day, but durian I could sure, not. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Let Let's move on to uh, to gaming because uh, we are nerds after all. Um. Okay. How How did you get into gaming? Do you remember the first time you played uh, an Age of Empires? Um, I'm not sure, but okay, the first game, I, RTS game, I probably played might not have been Age of Empires. It might have actually actually have been uh, Lego Rock Raiders. Uh, let me actually just check the <laughs> check the uh, release date. Uh, Lego Rock Raiders. No, it's 1999. So I think I actually played um, Age of Empires first, mm -hmm. and, and then Lego Rock. No, 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 wait, no, 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 I, I, I actually was Lego Rock Raiders. I played Age of Empires a while after that. And and which, so, which yeah. Age of Empires was the first one you played? Yeah, Age of Empires 1. Okay. I, Because I have uh, three brothers, so we, we did uh, LAN battles. Mm -hmm. It's quite fun. Yeah, you, you were about, you were quite young then. You were like seven years old then, I guess? Six or seven, yeah. Six or seven. So, so your brothers also like to play video games? Um, at the time, yeah. At I mean, the they kind of being Well, I mean, my, they they either stopped playing or gone into first person shooters. Okay. Mostly. Bunch of noobs. I'm, I'm really the only one who's really uh, stayed with RTS games this whole time. And uh, so, what is your favorite uh, RTS or Age of Empires game? Uh, well, definitely Age of Empires three. <laughs> it's far, uh, mostly because it's the only one I'm actually any good at. <laughs> Uh, did you play uh, Age of Mythology? I did play Age of Mythology, yeah. You played like with it? my school school friends, yeah. You also played uh, the last version, uh, Age of Empires Online. 
I did, but I'm not sure you can technically call that playing because you know how they had the old microtransaction sort of thing. Sorry. And you know how they had the whole microtransactions thing and oh, yeah, the yeah. different uh, gear and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. I actually spent most of my time uh, trading stuff. Okay. So in other words, <laughs> more into the MMO economy sort of thing rather than actually playing the game mm -hmm. properly. Okay. Um, yeah, so so let's talk about the UI. You already mentioned it a bit. You recently mm -hmm. finished the UI version 2.0, right? I wouldn't say finished. It's or still a work in progress, but I haven't worked on it properly for a number of weeks now. And yeah, well, it's holidays after all, right? But um, yeah, let, yeah, let's no let's talk a bit about um, tell tell us a bit about how when or why you started this project. Uh, you said two years okay. ago, I think. So, yeah, I mean, well, two years ago it wasn't really a UI. It was more of observer maps. So uh, you know how on vanilla we always had those uh, OBS Great Plains. I mean, OBS Great Plains was the only one every, everyone ever played. <laughs> uh, either OBS or WOPS. Mm -hmm. WOPS is the other one. Um, and everyone started off resigned, except for players one and two, and that was it. I mean, and sometimes the game would just fail to load. And then, well, okay, be before before that, I mean. I do have I did get some experience in triggers. So how, how I started off with that was just coming online, playing scenarios, and then after that I tried to figure out how they worked. And then after that I got into custom triggers, and then after that I got a bit into random map scripting, RMS. But um, it's not really the RMS, it's more of um kind of hacking the RMS. It's not really hacking, but, but you you Cow inject you, yeah, you inject stuff into the R, into the RMS code that you wouldn't normally be able to use. So for example, Garja maps are just standard RMS. There's nothing overly complicated in there. But well, it is complicated, but Silent it's not. Like, to Garza here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's done a good job. <laughs> but, but but I mean it's not really it's not. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's not, it is uh, not really programming. Yeah. It it is programming, but it's not. You know what? Yeah, you know what I mean. I know what you mean. But but then I, I got into. Um, so, I also browse the Asian mythology forums quite a bit, and they they ha they they're really the pioneers in this sort of stuff. They discovered how to actually put in new code into the maps mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So. I go into that, I learned it, and then I tried to make my own maps. Okay. And then that, you maybe you remember the OBS maps. Yeah, I, I remember the old maps <laughs> where you could uh, switch between your own vision and the other one's vision. And uh, Yeah, and the problem is they went, always went out of sync, yeah, and that was why. Yeah, they went out of sync. And <laughs> but yeah, that, that was some pretty good times. Um, yeah. Well, you are, you are working on 2.0 now. Um, Will we supposed see to any be <laughs> future releases or there, I mean there are supposed to be future releases um, there are currently in 2.06 quite a number of bugs um, the problem is that I'm actually the only one actually notices that the bugs exist because <laughs> uh, even when interjection and Zuta play tested they I mean, mm. they don't actually use all of the features so yeah. I you can't really tell whether all of the features are working. Mm -hmm. So most of the bugs which get fixed along the way are bugs that I've discovered myself through playtesting it okay. in Singapore. Uh, yeah, the the current UI is looks very awesome. It's very advanced, and um, but yeah. are you are you satisfied with how, how it is now, or do you want to improve on it? Uh, um, more? I'm I do have plans for it. Just haven't gone around to doing it. Mm -hmm. Been, I've been lazy. Well, I mean, after all, it's just uh, <laughs> fan work, right? So it's not really. Yeah. Like, uh, well, I mean, well, pressure. for example, the um, the Japan bug. Well, not really bug, but non-feature where the uh, shipment sent twice won't count. The reason why that's the case is that Age of Empires three doesn't actually have a function which lets you find out if a shipment has been sent twice. Mm -hmm. It's either a shipment has been sent or it hasn't been sent. Mm -hmm. So 
that means that you have to work around it. So that a lot of things in the UI aren't straightforward uh, mm -hmm. standard functions. You have I had to like, use a bit of creativity to find a way around those limitations. For example, the scoreboard doesn't actually keep track of score. You have to put the score it, yourself. It, yeah, and then it saves it, but it doesn't save it. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> it's hard to explain, but it's is not. Yeah, yeah. Not I, saw, I saw zero yeah, do it. Not. You can just pick some numbers. And... Yeah, well, that's not really what I mean. I mean, it doesn't save like Yumiu score as three mm -hmm. or something. It saves player A score as three. So if someone else took your place, yeah, then it yeah, would. Yeah. Sort of... yeah. All right. Let's let's move on to um, the game itself instead of just the UI. Um, you are one of the original Dirty Nilla Scrubs. Ah, uh, yes. I am one of Dirty find, Nilla Scrubs. <laughs> how did you find your transition to TAD? Uh, I think, as with most Dirty Nilla Scrubs, that was with the PK Tournament 5 or something. 4? Was it 4? Yeah, yeah. The four one, the one basically, the, first, the yeah. first TAD tournament. Yeah. And everyone moved to TAD for a while, and then everyone thought, oh, these TAD series are OP. What, <laughs> what can we do? And like, uh, I mean, we, we eventually just stuck to TAD. I'm not really sure why, but I think like a few players, like I think Musket first moved to TAD before I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few other Nella players, like uh, I think Noxguard, uh, uh, I think Rafa, Raphael moved to TAD as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, in, in, in any case, like people started moving to TAD because of the tournament, and then people just either moved back and then came back, or just never moved back to Nila. Yeah, there was also, I think, I remember correctly, uh, quite a cheating epidemic on Nila at that time. So, well, I mean, <laughs> you you don't that's believe your in perspective. That, but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't believe in that because, of course, I always played the uh, eight-player obs games. Of course, tremendous lag, but. You know, I mean, you don't see cheating in those, or if you do see cheating, well, then I did recently it's normally saw, not legit. <laughs> I do rec recently. I recently I saw a recorded game of someone hacking in a <laughs> OBS game, so it does happen. Okay, but sure. Um, do you do you miss those days, uh, the old days? Um, I kind of do, and and well, I, I well, can you see? I enjoy the game partly because of when people say, how did this strat win, All right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't actually believe that my strats are good. I just like winning with them when they're not supposed to win. That's that's what makes it enjoyable for me. And people saying, what did he just do? And in vanilla, uh, the eight player obs maps, uh, there's like six people obsing. Mm -hmm. Whereas recently there's, you know, there's, this, there's been this whole uh, streaming Twitch thing, mm -hmm. and we've got like 50 people mm -hmm. watching. That's actually a huge leap from. <laughs> so you actually, you actually uh, like the fame. You are yeah, like, like exhibitionist. I, I like the fame. Yeah. <laughs> not not exhibitionist. That's a completely different thing. But uh, <laughs> yeah. well, depends. But um, let let let's uh, talk about something different. Uh, the level of play. It's often said that uh, the level on TAD is higher than it uh, was or is on Nilla. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I don't really believe that to be the case so much. I mean, if you look at most of the current top 30, say, players, mm -hmm. a lot of them come from Nilla. I mean, you're from Nilla. Musket's from Nilla. You know? So uh, the problem was that when we, we, when we all switched to TAD and then we kept losing and everyone said, ha, ah, these Nilla players are so bad. It's mostly because Age Empire 3 is like all, all this game knowledge, and then we had to learn what six new sieves, mm -hmm. and then compare that with eight. Mm -hmm. So it's basically six times fourteen new matchups. Yeah, that's which a lot. is sixty uh, nine ninety six ninety four. No, eight four. I don't know. I, you failed your test. <laughs> I failed my test. I even did maths. But, I know. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's, it's a lot of stuff to learn and take in. And yeah, I mean, we eventually got used to it. And because we were all pretty much solid mechanic, mechanical ones, mm -hmm. except for all the auto lamer Nilla scrubs. Uh, like me. <laughs> 
Well, you were more like Spain. Uh, I then... did say mostly Spain, yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. Ohio and French. Um, so l l let's talk about the, those early days of transitions. Uh, will you ever finish Challengers of the New World? <sighs> I thought I brought it up. <laughs> That's up to you. And me, <laughs> up yeah. to me. I think you are <laughs> dodging because you know you will lose. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but... Um... <laughs> All right, what let's bury this now? quickly. And, <laughs> um, I don't think anyone in the chat actually knows what we're talking about in the first place. It's been, uh, it's I think been a year. A few. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time ago. Um, so what what is your favorite Civ? I've been asked this quite a number of times. I'd probably have to say Ports. Mm -hmm. Ports are Brits. It's I am a Nilla scrub, so it has to be a Nilla Civ, and I'd say the Ports are Brits. So it's a question between 1010 or virginia company which one do you like more than i i didn't actually use to do virginia company all the time i used to play standard mm -hmm. sort of bridge i mean if you've seen my gg underscore wp account. i i remember <laughs> i remember when when about you started experimenting with this virginia company and it, it it's quite it's changed quite a lot from when you first did it, it. yeah it has i mean i think before i used to go um Great coat, what? I think he sent the card. Yeah, I mean, I would age up at start aging at six minutes or something yeah. like that, something ridiculous, and it, somehow it worked. But then it worked mainly because we I was playing in those eight player ops games, mm -hmm. and people who I was playing in was mostly like first lieutenant. Mm -hmm. So, not not to say anything like demeaning, but mm -hmm. there was a skill gap. Yeah, there was a skill. Gap. Yeah. Um. So, uh, which Civ do you hate to play against the most? Uh, probably Japan. Why? If they manage to get the eco going, like, as Brits, you know, you know, Brits need the hunts, right? Mm -hmm. And then not only does Japan not really need the hunts, but they actually stop you from taking their hands and you spend a lot of time just sieging down that shrine mm -hmm. which they built for like 75 wood and in the time that you spent sieging it down it's already gathered maybe 30 wood so mm -hmm. yeah and you can't really raid the villagers mm -hmm. so you have to apply pressure early but if your opponent is actually pretty decent at japan then that's, that's difficult to do as well yeah i mean everyone says japan isn't really a top save sure they might not Really be a top sieve, but in some situations, like on Siberia, it's just like, how how do you win? Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a difference between like how good a sieve is in the sense of how many matchups it actually wins, and also how annoying or how hard it is to win those matchups. Yeah, especially Japan's uh, 4.5 speed musketeers. That's like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what about a favorite map? I'm a Nilla scrub. You're a Nilla scrub. You know the answer to this question. Great plains. <laughs> Great plains. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so you are quite famous for your unorthodox approach to the game. Um, can you talk a yeah. bit about that? Do you have like an idea before the game about how you will play the matchup, or do you literally just pull it out of your ass? Uh, well, all right, so, but... yeah, okay. so <laughs> there, there, there is some thought which goes into what I do. It's not completely random. Like, First of all, I look at who I'm playing and how good they might be and what Civ they're playing, what Civ I'm playing and sort of what they're most likely to do, especially on that map. And I just see, I just think how much can I get away with, like, for example, the Virginia company in Greedy Build. If someone's maybe PR, I don't know, 34, then I should be able to get away with that. Mm -hmm. But if they're like PR for you, then most of the time I'll just play standard mm -hmm. stuff. So you you said already before that you don't think you, your strats are good, but still sometimes even against PR forty you win with some weird builds. Um, yeah, why, I mean, why it depends how how, how confused they get. Yeah, so it's it's mainly <laughs> psy psychological. It's, it uh, is psychological. Like um, maybe first game, I'll do some really greedy greedy build right mm -hmm. and then second game they'll think i'm doing the same greedy build and then I do some really fast rush mm -hmm. that, that sort of thing um it it doesn't works 
so much so so well if they know what's coming. Mm -hmm. That's why I mean scouting in this game, of course, that's really important. And yeah. <laughs> so so how would you best describe your play style? So not so much your approach to the game, but uh, your style in the game. Um. I guess I, th I think more along the lines of there's no re real such thing as a sieve counter. It's more like a play style counter. Mm -hmm. uh, um, what? Uh, so if someone plays an OP sieve, but they do a bad strat or they do a, a strat, which if you can predict what's happening, then you can easily counter it. Mm -hmm. Then even though that sieve is considered OP, then what they're doing doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So if I I try to anticipate what my opponent is doing, and that's not always necessarily by scouting. Like I might think, okay, look, they, they haven't attacked me yet, and maybe I can build another ten manor houses. And sometimes that works because they're doing the fast fortress, and sometimes it doesn't work because they've just been Massing, massing up, up yeah. 30 C4 and then just walk into my base and what am I going to do? I'll send colonial militia. And, okay, sometimes that'll work as well. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> um, so, um, is there a kind of style that you prefer to play against? or? or... Well, um, I know what style I prefer to play. As. I mean, I like, you know, my parts 10 10. Mm -hmm. That's like take, take map control and don't let, starve my opponent of hunt. Mm -hmm. And that worked a lot. That worked pretty well in vanilla Great Plains because sometimes you don't even have hunts. <laughs> oh, then it's easy, right? Here's four chickens. Go starve to death with your forty villagers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the style I don't like playing against the most is probably walling. I mean, walling up style, water and walls. So can you see yeah, I mean... your worst nightmare? Yeah, I mean, I remember the first game I played against Kinesi. Uh, that was, I think, Ports versus Japan on, um, what was it, Borneo? It, no, it wasn't. I think it was Borneo. It's like the the Around the island yeah, surrounded, yeah, yeah, yeah surrounded yeah. by water. Yeah, yeah. I think you were also in the Skype chat. It's like the 52 minute game or something. <laughs> it was more than an hour. It's like, I didn't even have a proper water deck, so there were no upgrade cards. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, he just won by. Just, uh, Changing his uh, coin to export and spamming like 50 Hatamoto Samurai or something. <laughs> yeah, then those units are really <laughs> OP. Um, so, what are your thoughts on hotkeys? You don't really use groups or many hotkeys. I often see you clicking when you train units. Is it a habit or do you do it? Is, yeah, it's, it's a habit. I mean, it is a habit. I, I've just gone used So, to w before up to maybe first lieutenant level. I didn't use hotkeys at all. Mm -hmm. um, I only started using control groups after reading this post in Heaven Games. I don't know whose post it was. It's say, like, hey, you should use hotkeys. It really speeds speeds things up. And then the first thing was like, they said, I usually put my town center to control group three mm -hmm. and then V to train villager. And that was kind of the first hotkey I ever used always add the town center to control group three and train villagers at the start of the game. And if you watch my stream, then it's always town center, first control group. And then I usually select it while doing other things, train villagers, eject mm -hmm. hotkeys, e eject villagers in the hotkey. Mm -hmm. And all, all my hotkeys are pretty much default. Default hotkeys. Okay. So I haven't ever had to change those properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so do you think uh, it would improve your level of play or is it not really suited for your style? I don't think it's suited for my style. I mean, I've been, so I've been playing this game for what, at least nine years, right? Mm -hmm. And I've been doing maybe a minimalistic amount of hotkeys for say since 2008, maybe perhaps. Mm -hmm. So that would be six or seven years, right? And it is really hard to get used to using hotkeys for units as well as buildings. Mm -hmm. I know it would really help because, if, for example, those, um, especially the skirmisher dragoon things, whenever they're, so my style really works, you know, the, the whole clicking and moving units around stuff. 
mm-hmm. without using drill groups. I think that really works when it's just a straight up battle. But when there's kiting involved, like mm-hmm. hit and run, then control groups benefit a yeah. lot more. Yeah, that's something I can improve. In. Okay, so let's talk a bit about the the patch that has been out now for for a, a few months. I think two months maybe. Um, what what okay. are your thoughts on the balance of the current uh, patch? Part, part parts OP. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, does the eighty foot? I suppose it makes ten ten even better, right? It, it does. I mean, I've actually started using eleven uh, twenties. Oh really? Yeah, because wow. oh, yeah, because... because I mean, it's eighty foot for a villager. And it doesn't slow me down by that much, like maybe 10 seconds compared to 10 10 because it is so cheap. Mm-hmm. And especially if I, I get maybe a 60 foot treasure or even a 30 foot treasure, then it pretty much covers the cost mm-hmm. of the villager. And um, <clears throat> what um, what about the other sieves that has been changed, the uh, Aero, for example? Um, maybe Dutch, any thoughts? Dutch, right. Um, Dutch six banks I think that's too much, too much of a boost. <laughs> have you have you tried like, it? Because uh, from I have tried it, but I mean, I mean, did did you were you watching that stream where I played against Gaia? And I mean, I think he he won in the end, right? He was winning in the end, right? It was like, Iroquois I, I against people, Dutch. I don't, I don't yeah, and I would just build six banks, and even though I lost like twenty villagers or thirty villagers, my eco was still pretty much on par with his. Mm-hmm. Well, but let's let's consider that like, Hero has. I did lose the game. Yeah, that yeah. too. But, um, <laughs> I I think like, okay, you get six banks, banks, and there is right. an XP bonus now uh, compared not not as big as on Nilla, but better than on the okay. repatch. Um, but right. still, if the other Civ plays well, you should not be able to get away with making six banks, right? And still sustain um, enough military to. What do you mean by playing well? I mean, some some civs will. Well, maybe I they'll mean, rush rush if, you. If but... if you get to fortress and and make, uh, you send a thousand wood. Okay, then probably you can you can build six banks pretty quickly. But normally. Yeah, that, that's that's Mito's like full on greed build trading yeah. post market six <laughs> banks. Something you wouldn't be able to do normally. Well, I think, of course, if you build six banks, it's going to be strong, but it's a, a big investment. So I do think right. that there should be a window to punish that greed. I mean, that there is always a window for any strat. Uh, but Dutch, Dutch are basically a factory Sith. Mm-hmm. So even if you rush them, they're always gathering something. So I feel like rushes aren't as good against them as with us, even though they lack a musketeer unit in H2. They do have colonial militia, and with colonial militia, which I know some people say, I mean, you know who I mean. It's a bad <laughs> card. <laughs> yeah. So, so how, how it, high it, would you it, rate Dutch then? Uh, the between mid tier and I mean, they're not the best, but I think they're maybe seventy-five percent of the way up. There. Really solid then. Yeah, quite solid. Yeah, especially because on, on vanilla, like Dutch were kind of a micro sieve. Mm-hmm. So if you could micro good, then you're good at Dutch because skirm, skirm rotate combo in H3, provided you can micro, as well as defend in H2. Mm-hmm. And now that you've also got an eco, so you don't really have to, have to have to rely so heavily on on just micro, they're better than they were before, mm-hmm. I think. Okay. Um... So what what would be the st- top save at the moment then, according to you? Ports, ports. <laughs> ports? <laughs> Seriously? Or well, well, I mean, I, uh, um, okay. So suppose I'm playing ports. What what is the sieve I'm most? I don't want to face the most. Um, maybe Japan or Germany. Okay. So Japan or Germany. China. And maybe India actually. China, no, because I, I do the uh, ten ten rush, and the ten pikes can do quite a lot of damage. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the tournament that's going on, and uh, the reason why we're doing these interviews. Um, okay. You didn't play in summer, right? Any reason? No, I did not. Um, I just felt like there would be too many distractions. 
Mm-hmm. You so were I just didn't play. Busy with school, or <laughs> I wasn't really busy at school. I was just at home, just yeah. sleeping. So that's what <laughs> All right. Uh, you did play in um, in spring. One before that. Yeah, yeah. I lost and to uh, Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy, and um, yes. let's talk a bit about that. You were you were playing, I think, quite well before that, but then uh, you went AFK, uh, as uh, Ryan put it, against Soldier. <sighs> Uh, any reason for that, maybe? Were you nervous? Actually, or? around that, well, maybe I might be making excuses here, but around that time, I did have, like, a few coursework deadlines. I had, like, three tests coming up. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't really in great psychological shape to do stuff. Okay. Plus, I think during the uh, match, I kept uh, typing and re- replying to Soldier. <laughs> and as, as Maito knows, like, Whenever you you type too much, then your your level of gameplay goes down. Oh yeah, for but, sure. Yeah. So soldier was getting into your head a bit. Yeah, I shouldn't have let him, but mm. that I think that's what happened. Um. Um. Why 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 are you uh, competing in the tournaments? Do you you play to win or just for fun? Uh, mostly it's for fun. And do, do you? It think... would be it would it would be nice if I did win, but I don't really think that's gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, you you are in the bottom bracket. Uh, University yeah. considered to be the easiest part of the bracket, so you do have a chance, right? Supp- supposedly, <laughs> there are quite a few um, people in there. Let's take let's take a look at the brackets. Okay, let me just look. Um, so we talked a bit before about about your strats and stuff. Do you think um, you you can? get your style or strats to work in tournament games as well or will you play just mostly standard after all in the, the um you don't have to give I'll away kind of, your I'll, secrets probably like uh well i mean i'm already like revealing all the secret strats and stream so like <laughs> <laughs> my, my greatest um advantage is probably having unknown things to do but now that i'm showing them on stream like that's kind of gone mm-hmm. <laughs> It's wow. kind of like how uh, Acer game, Acer God was um, was practicing in secret, and then he revealed all the stuff for the tournament. Mm-hmm. But I'm not really practicing in secret; I'm just testing stuff in public. Mm-hmm. So that advantage is gone. And but I mean, people still yeah. have to watch all your streams, right? It's, you have yeah, so much content, true. so it's it's a little bit hidden, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it disappears after two weeks. Yeah. So um, yeah, you have. Most likely, uh, Marshall Rondon, um, easy or what do you think? Uh, I played a lot against him Manila. Uh, I wouldn't say easy, but not not hard, not difficult. And then it could be pretty much Goon Goon or no, no, no. Then it will be Goon Goon. I don't think Jurassic will be him. <laughs> well, he could. I mean, Jurassic definitely but... did beat you a few games. <laughs> so <I just>, yeah. <laughs> he won one game. Yeah, Smackdown. I mean, the, 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 I think the problem with Yurashik is that he always messes up before he ever does anything. Mm-hmm. So you can be a bit greedy against him. Yep. Um, but, but yeah, Goon Goon. Um, well, his, his biggest problem is really that he only plays China, right? I mean, Yurashik's problem, I mean. Uh, He's only really good at that's, that's his. That's his main sieve. I'm not sure. Uh, he does. He plays auto as well, but auto is auto. And he's not. I don't think he was that good with auto when I played him. Uh, I don't know. I, I I can't remember if he beat you or whatever. But yeah. So Goon Goon, yeah. What do you think? Can beat him or? Uh Goon Goon. I'd say maybe four D sixty. In your favor or his favor? In in, in his favor. All right. So it's that, that will that already be a tough round. Yeah. So uh, let's wrap it up and talk about um. Well, oh, no, one more question. Who's the best player you uh, you ever played? Um, as a dirty nail scrub, uh, Elena, uh, Killer Swede. Mhm. Yeah, yeah. He was really probably. good. Yeah. And not... That's the best, best, best nail scrub <laughs> of all time. <laughs> not HO, <laughs> Samwise maybe. Um. It's difficult. I mean, the problem is that, like, Elena was consistent, and 
H2 and Samwise aren't really at their peak right now, mm -hmm. I'd say. Like if you've seen, you know, of course, any of H2's streams, it's like half the time he's rage quitting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you can't really, he's not really at this point in time mm -hmm. playing 100%. Mm -hmm. So maybe H2 at 100% would be the best player that I've played against, but I don't think he's ever actually been at 100% when he's been when playing he played against him. me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so any other players you are looking out for this tournament? Um, I'd say Tenko Kuhn, but he's not in the tournament. So. <laughs> Lord Raphael, maybe. Yeah, he's also in the, the last scrub. So. Dayaruga. Yeah, let's go for him. Uh, Dayaruga, sure. India Ruga. India Ruga. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, so, what will be your predictions? Uh, top four, or uh, what do you think? Uh, well, we, we we have the brackets now. So, what do you think if looking at Hold the on, brackets? I'll just so... load it up. Okay, let's see. Um, I really like seaboning and get in, get there, but. <laughs> I don't even know if he's playing, to be honest. When I asked well, him he, for an interview, he said he probably wouldn't play, but there's been okay. changes, I think, so maybe it does. Um, like, let, let me highlight a few notable potential games. Sure. Um, we have Samwise against Lord Raphael in the round of eight. That could go 50-50, I think, because mm -hmm. they're, both, they're both primarily French players. Mm -hmm. And I think Raphael's French is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, I've always seen his French as one of the best on Nilla, okay. and that probably applies to Tad as well. So, uh, if you, well, you, it's just a prediction, so make a choice between the two. Um, I'd actually say Rafa, but then Sam is going to, you know, <laughs> well, if, you, if you ever watch this, but oh, as, as a Nilla right. scrub, I, I favor the Nilla scrub. So. Okay, so Rafa will then most likely be either top, well, top finalist top contender, four. top four. Um, yeah. Then we'll have uh, H2O against Mito, maybe, or uh, yeah, Acer well, game, perhaps. I'd, I'd say poor, poor Mito. He's, <laughs> he's not going to make it. All like, right. he never does. Oh, <laughs> poor Mito. <laughs> poor Mito. <laughs> and then, you, know, you never know. I mean, like, sometimes he plays really well, and sometimes, like, everything just falls apart really quickly. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of got the same problem as me, quite inconsistent. Mm -hmm. uh, you played him quite a lot. I did play him quite a lot in the past. Um, what about not recently? The bottoms. We have Dai India Ruga there as contender. Uh, you to or Goon Goon to make it to the round of four. Any thoughts? Possible. Um, far as well. What do you mean thoughts? Well, I'm not really thinking I'll get that far as you. I've already said, but mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So last question then. Um, sure. Do you think you will do better than the spring tournament, or? Uh... Well, I mean, in the spring I got to what round of sixteen, mm -hmm. or was it round of eight, something like I that. Think sixteen. There's there's just so many players in this one. It's like those from round of 128, and I mean Goon Goon in what round of thirty two? Uh yeah. Yeah. So. No, to uh, me, I think uh, you no, you meet Gungun around the sixteen. All right, so if I make it around sixteen, I'll meet. I'll probably meet him there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be around. It'll be actually around the same. Mm -hmm. Probably. All right. Thank you very much, Azam, for answering all these questions and uh, enjoy okay. your evening. Good night. Thank you.